What I wanted to talk about is, I'm not an expert in stained glass, but it's just something I like to do once in a while when I get the chance. So this is really not instruction on stained glass, but it's an explanation of what I'm doing and I'm glad you guys get the chance to follow along with this because it's pretty cool to share it with you. And the first thing I want to talk about, the things that you use that are not necessarily tools, you get them more at the craft store. You wouldn't think traditionally. What you have right here is, this is how I pull my sizes for the glass. And what this is, this is a piece of tracing paper that you buy in the art store. It works great. That's where the patterns come from. And you use things like these T-pins that come from the store also because you can use them to pin the glass where you want it. It's just like a third hand. The other thing is, marking on these different colored glasses, you need an assortment of Sharpie markers. And the finer the tip, the better. And everything else is just standard stuff. But the one other thing is the small sauce cups. I put the oil that I dip my cutter in in there. Because if you fill this cutter full of oil, it just turns into a leaky mess. So instead of using the automatic oiler that's on here, I dip every cut. You take regular scissors, cut out your pattern, and then use the pens to mark it on the glass. And how I choose my glass is not very scientific. I just move it around until I get something that I really like. Okay, I've moved this pattern around on the glass, and I found a spot that has the nice colors that I like. I actually have the pattern backwards because we're on the back side of the glass. This is smoother. The other side has some ripples to it, so it's not impossible to cut it that way, but it's just easier if you do it this way. And I'll show you how I trace out the pattern. I hold it down, and in the straight areas, I just put two small dots. We'll take care of that later. And then I try not to touch the paper, but get as close to it as possible with the marker. Now I'll go on the side of the glass that I'm going to keep. That's where I put the straight edge. And I trace it out. We're going to put the foil around this glass. So you want to get any dust from the grinder off of it. And you can see when I cut this, I had to go back with the grinder and clean up the uh, cut up just a little bit. I like to start so when I come back around and end, I'll cap over it. So that way, this is going to be outside. If you got rainwater running down, it's not going to be able to run right in uh, behind the tape. What you're trying to do is have equal amount of foil tape showing on each side of the glass. I just use a cap from a Sharpie marker to try to get any air bubbles and make it as flat as possible. And I go around every edge and make sure it's completely contacting the glass. Alright, here's a brass wire that's going between some of the pieces to act as a reinforcement because this is going to be out in the wind and everything, I think it needs all the help it can get. That's why I use the wider copper foil so there's more solder. And you need the patience of a saint to put this stuff in because it just wants to plop up. Okay, we're zoomed in on the 
stained glass panel here and this has foil tape on it and you can see when I started I was using a real narrow foil tape and I was worried because this is going to be outside that I needed to go to a bigger foil tape and I really made a mistake because the foil tape I chose was too big but I'm too far in to change it now so I'm just going to finish it out and I think once it gets up on the wall because it's going to be about nine feet off the ground you're not going to really see it like it looks when we're zoomed in like this I want to show the process that I use for putting the solder on. And this is a foil tape flux. I just brush it on liberally. You should keep the smoke out of your face. When I'm normally doing this, I have my exhaust fan running, but I had to turn it off because of the video. I wouldn't be able to use the audio. And then once the heat gets going, there, and then <clears throat> I'll go back over it and smooth it out. There's a ton of great videos on YouTube about how to do stained glass. So how I thought I would make this video worth everyone's time is just showing one specific thing that you can take away from it. And here's our glass pattern and first I drew it on a pencil then I traced it in Sharpie so it would show up on camera. But I want to show how I create this specific part right here. This was the compass that I used to make the circle. So without changing anything, I'll put it on the glass. And I like this part of glass right over here because I like the colors. So I'll kind of use this. And it's hard to see. But you get a pencil line on there. And what this will do is this will put the compass so you don't run out of material to cut. But as you can see, it's just sliding around if I'm not in camera focus. I don't know what I'm doing. Here. There we go. Okay. So if you try to just draw this out, this is going to be like walking on ice without ice skates. So how I do this is I take a piece of blue painter's tape. And you can even on glass, you can use masking tape or whatever. This just so happens it's all I have. But you kind of get the idea of where you are. I like to go a little bit past to give myself an insurance right there. And then without moving your eyes, keep kind of looking where you're going. And before I start penciling like crazy, I make sure I'm not going to run out of material. And I have the color variation that I want and enough glass. So now, I'll spin it around. And this may not show up on camera because it is so light. Ah, moved. <laughs> yep, it's not going to work that way. So you just have to rub it off. I'm glad that happened because sometimes these things are made to look like they go perfect and they don't. So what I'll do when something like that happens is... I'll use three pieces of tape. That gives the point on the compass something to dig into. And I'll move myself to a different location. I rubbed with my finger the pencil line right off the glass, and I'll just restart. You sell glass cutters that cut circles, so you wouldn't need to go through all this stuff. So this video is for someone who doesn't have a circle cutter, who's only going to cut one circle and doesn't want to buy a circle cutter or borrow one. So I'm going to show you how you cut this glass out. This is just how I do it. It might not be the best way, but it produces the least amount of waste. Closely, I kind of missed my pen line there, but I'm not worried about it because I know with a piece like this, I'm going to have to run it through the grinder anyways. And 
as you're breaking this, you want to make sure that it sounds just like you're scratching the glass with the cutter. I'm actually going a little bit too slow, but I think that's because I'm recording this with a camera. And then something like this small piece here, you might be tempted just to crack off. I leave it and just hit it with the grinder because it's not worth breaking the piece out and having to start over. I don't like to work from templates where I buy somebody else's pattern or something. I just make this stuff up as I go. So I'll show you a little bit about how I do my design process. Now I'll be able to fill in the rest of it with this. And I will fit everything together and cut everything, pulling all the information right from this cardboard pattern. Okay, I have to stop the video here because I'm out of time for working on it this weekend. Um, what we're looking at is the center of the panel, plus I started trimming it out, and then a frame is of the, the sash frame is just laying over it. And it's really turning out great. The rest of the steps is going to be to finish the stained glass, and I have to shape this sash and then paint it because I'm going to be using putty to glaze this window or this glass in the window. So you have to use an oil-based primer with the putty and then paint over the putty with the oil-based primer and let it sit for 10 days before you can put the latex exterior paint on it. So that's where we're at.